went across like that. Good morning. It's Friday, November 20th at 10 o'clock Pacific time. For I know for some of you, you have, here, here she comes. She's here. Hello. Hello. Yeah. You saw that claw come out, right? Oof. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, doing a wonky facing. Um, but before we do that, I had a couple questions. Um, starting with Lori. Lori doesn't have a printer. And so how can she get this thing printed off? Well, I would go to a neighbor and ask if they could do it. Or if you're in a guild, maybe somebody in the guild. I mean, you could send it to Kinko's, but you're going to pay like crazy. But the other thing, too, is you can just work off your computer if you want. I've actually taught classes where um, they had to buy my book, Simply Stars, which is no longer available, and one gal was working off her iPad. So I wish I had a better answer for you, but certainly there's somebody you could say, please print this for me, and I'll give you a goodie of something. <laughs> I don't know. I'll give you a spool of thread. <laughs> so... Let's see, also before we look at pictures, um, Kathy, I did not put yours up because it was just super blurry. I, I hope you could try and do that again. That would make me very, very happy. So again, you are delighting me beyond measure. And um, what you're doing with these faces are just something else. And then something kind of made me even smile because they're so wacky. Wouldn't that be funny to... Uh, to for um, a gift this December <laughs> to make somebody a self-portrait and make it as crazy as possible. And then if you're with them, watch them having to say thank you. <laughs> I like to get presents like that. My son Joey is usually good at giving us something that just is, we just scream. We just scream laughing because it's so weird. So yeah, they could be this. <laughs> So let's take a look at some of these. I'm going to pull this towards me a little bit so I don't have to reach as far. So um, again, thank you for posting them in the forum. Super appreciate it. So this is Old Glories. <laughs> and the, of course, the first thing that got me were the eyeballs. Oh my gosh, they're hilarious and how you handled the glasses. Uh, but then I then I saw a reindeer down there, which tells me you're getting ready for Christmas. And then the hair is three-dimensional. I hadn't even thought about that. The background fabric you used is really cute. Um, Connie, you can get the pictures of the faces on our um, in our projects. Let me go see if I can find it when we're done here so I can show you. You can also get templates just by Googling noses, line drawing of noses. Mary, Mary, Mary. Okay, so Mary quilted it first, and then she started adding the face stuff. And I'm wondering if that's the ghastlies in the background, because that is pretty darn cute. Now, what you're going to need to do, Mary, is because you quilted before, I would still go back and finish off those raw edges with something, like whether it's just black lines like... Um, like I did on mine or whatever, just to tack them down. Um, Apple Web Plus is supposed to be a um, permanent fusible, but I just think a little bit of caution could go a long way. Padma. Oh, Padma. A mermaid. You know, this really struck me because just by that tail coming out of her hair, head, I feel like I'm seeing the mermaid swimming, and then you've got the fishes and all that. Uh, I wish I'd thought of a mermaid, because that's pretty darn cool. Let's see, Sharon. Oh, Sharon, Sharon. Sharon said she had a really hard time with this because she doesn't consider herself an artist. Well, you know what, Sharon? This was out of the box for you. You're an artist. You can now put that tick past your name. This is spectacular. And uh, one of the things that I super like is how you handle the hair. That is really cool. Where you put down the green and then you just added the purple on top with curls and twirls. So no more saying that you're not an artist because you are. I crown you that right now. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Okay, this just cracked me up. First of all, 
I believe that might be half a spool, if not a full spool, that has sewn onto her hair, like a barrette. That's <laughs> pretty clever. And then I noticed the cat on the left-hand side, and the dog took me a little bit longer on the right-hand side. But then what she pointed out in her words were her cheeks are Coca-Cola. I wonder what you like to drink. <laughs> I don't want to tell you what mine would be. <laughs> Okay, and then this is Lisa. Lisa, your little smile just makes me smile. It's just a thin little line that you cut out, and there you go. I think this is fabulous. Now, Lisa, um, I, I think you might be from another country. I'm not sure, but I think you might be. All my new friends, all my new friends. Heather. <laughs> You got some stuff going on in your life. I feel like this is a Where's Waldo. Uh, when I'm looking at it now, like I see the karate guy on the left-hand side. I didn't even see that, or karate girl before. Uh, there's so many little secret clues here. And I guess what I want to know is if you, do you live in Santa Fe? Or I mean, not Santa Fe, Albuquerque, because of all the hot air balloons. That is a question that came to my mind. Oh gosh, look at the scissors in her hair. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, black dog, I cannot believe I'm saying this about an avatar, but this is the sexiest avatar I've ever seen. Wow, she is hot, man. And I couldn't get over, I mean, look at her earrings and the way her neck is so skinny and her big lips and her head is tilted. Oh yeah, she is sexy avatar. <laughs> And then look at the background with the skulls behind it. <laughs> Fabulous. And I do love birds, and I spy a bird here too. Oh, oh, now, okay, Nancy, you emailed me this, and I just, I just opened it this morning, but then I realized I had already posted you up, that somehow you managed to get it on the forum, so thank you. Um, I've never seen an open mouth singing like that. I <laughs> love love it. And as I was looking at that, then I noticed on the left-hand side, the kitty with the spool and the thread and the, or the spool of thread and the needle and the scissors. Very, very subtle. But that tells more of who you are to me. Don't these things just make you guys smile? Okay, Deborah. Yeah, I think you're ready to fuse down and do your thing. Um, those earrings are fabulous and that and then your hat so this is just great so much fun and you kept your background fairly mild so you could really you had a lot of latitude when you chose your colors and this and that okay quilter okay so quilter when i saw this all of a sudden i went wait a minute are those like buttons that you've sewn on i think so for a necklace so i love the dimensionality that you guys are bringing to the table <laughs> Look at the earrings, <laughs> the rotary cutters, <laughs> and, then, and then twinkle eyes. Oh, God, these are making me so happy. Thank you. And I, and I don't know where you got those little quilt blocks. Maybe they were in fabric or something like that. But yes, you are a quilter, <laughs> CJ. And then we have threads. All right, um, so fun. Now you use that swirly stuff uh, for the hair. I wish I had that fabric, but then you went and put lines in. That's fabulous. And then the bottom right, the first thing I saw was born to ride. And I went, oh my God, she's a motorcycle person. And then I realized it's a bicycle, I think, I don't know. Oh, and Bernina loves you too. Also, I wanna tell you that on the forum, um, Threads put up a link to another way to do a facing. And I had not seen that before. So thank you so much for doing that. If you Google facings, you're gonna find out a whole lot of different ways you can do it, all right? And what I'm gonna share today is how to do a wonky facing. So let me back off a little bit. And here we go. 
Normally, when I do facings, I do something that's pretty straightforward. I do the sides, I do the bottom, and then I do the top. And, I, and the way I do a top, I do it so that I have a built-in sleeve, okay? So that's how I normally do it. And the cool thing is I can like fuse it down with something and then go and whip stitch it down when I feel like it. But that's this quilt. So I wouldn't do what I'm going to do today on this quilt uh, because it would waste too much fabric. All right. And it's straight lines on the edge. So I ended up with my girl uh, binding her. Because I felt like I just needed something to finish off the edge. I Facing it just did not cut the mustard for me. I wanted a binding. I used the binding as a uh, design, right? As a, another way to design. And I'll tell you what, I had another binding picked out. And then I looked at the back of this. I had some of that left over. And that's what I bound it in. And I love it. Because it just adds another pop. But now this, this one, my first one... <laughs> you want me to teach you how to put sleeves on <laughs> especially for a major competition <laughs> yeah well this one I wanted it to be wonky on the edge just soft and curvy and so that's what I'm going to show you today how I did it seriously how much do I hate doing <laughs> sleeves about that much no doubt that was something from a super seminar and I didn't have a sleeve on it. So I grabbed, because that's Ricky's hand dies. I grabbed some of his hand dies and uh, just pinned it on. <laughs> or sometimes I'll sew it in and I'll just take safety pins across the bottom. Just saying. <laughs> so, all right. Um, let's take, I've got four images to share with you and I have some pretty darn important information at the end. All right. So if you have to go somewhere, come back and watch the end because it's about the holiday quilt. Oops, there's a mistake. Um, all right. So what I'm going to face is just this crazy little piece that I used for a sample, um, for the for taping of the quilt show i don't even remember what it was i think it was how to do a binding and how to change colors or something like that so i have i wanted something quilted so i grabbed this so then what i did was i cut off four three edges top left and right clean but then you can see down at the bottom i did a wonky curve now you guys you don't want to go too crazy on your curves you, i wouldn't go anything more exaggerated than this unless you're willing to take the risk. And by that, I don't know what it is, but my gut just tells me, take it easy. So then I get a piece of fabric and I cut it a little bit larger than the whole thing. And then I put them right sides together. Okie doke, right sides together. And then I sew it all the way around all right so that's where now i'm going to go to my camera so let me push this thing back um get back on me or no wait hold on a second i gotta why isn't that going away huh why is that not go oh i know why because i didn't clear out the picture <laughs> Your graciousness is beyond, uh, beyond appreciated, <laughs> right? So let me go over here, push this back and get this so it's not so blurry. Oh, that still seems pretty blurry, doesn't it, folks? Let's go like, let me try one more. Okay, so here it is. I sewed it in red just so that you guys could see it, okay? I, I would not normally do that. I would sew it probably in this case in a neutral color, all right? Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rotor. I've trimmed all of this like a quarter. Well, I no, it was like that before I did it. Never mind. I'm going to cut along here. I'm just going to cut this stuff off. 
By the way, Kristen is putting together um, uh, some really good Black Friday things for us and Cyber Monday. Yay, Kristen. And I have no idea what the specials are going to be. Okay, now down here is where I have my wonky, right? Oh, I hate that when that happens. All right, shut. So now the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is trim off these corners here. Right there. I'm gonna leave just a little bit of that thread. I mean, I'm not gonna cut all the way to the thread is what I mean to say. Okay. There we go. Then very carefully, very carefully, pull these things apart because you only have to do it wrong once to understand what I'm talking about. You're going to want to cut a little hole, all right? And then, and see, this is why I'm saying I wouldn't want to do a big piece because you would be wasting some fabric. I'm going to cut around like this, on two or three inches, around the corner. I'm hoping, yeah, it's on screen. I'm having to watch my scissors and not that I'm capturing it. I think you know where I'm going with this. Some larger scissors might have been <laughs> more appropriate. I just grabbed these before the camera came on. All right. Okie dokie. So Joanne Sharp shared with me what her next year's class is going to be. And I'm not going to talk about it today, but I'm going to talk about it so that you can get the early bird discount soon. All right. So then what you do is then again, you turn it inside. You turn it, okay, like this. Okay. Now when it's time to really poke out make sure my iron's on yeah poke out that corner um you might want to use i have my four and one tool has this pointy thing on the end you know you don't want to do something sharp like a scissors because it will go through um also uh r and k puts out this precision turning tool it's pretty cool it's got like this little um bumpy on the end so we'll do that too okay go and then what I will do I'm gonna bring my iron over here my pressing mat I want to really um, press the you know what out of this here so cuz see how it's rolly and stuff like that um, I probably and I want to make sure that I'm not seeing this sticking out so which leads me to you might want to face with something that blends with the front a little bit more if you wanted you could go and do a top stitch but I don't want to do that I don't think I did that on mine I think it finally just relaxed yeah it did and so you know you see where I'm going with this you just kind of keep going all the way around if you have to maybe it'll be better if I do it from this side and pull it yeah that might be the better thing to do this is a little bit like wrestling an alligator I understand that it just occurred to me, I wonder if you graded the seams underneath. So grading the seams mean you would go and maybe take out a layer or two underneath. Okay, so then, then what you're going to do, I'm not going to sit and do this all day, right? But you'll get the drift. And then you're going to press under, all right? Like this. The corner can be a little funny. You know, you might have to cut a little V or something. Go all the way around. Okay, I don't like that there. But then when you get it the way you want it, I would take something like a glue stick or something just to hold it down until I stitch it. I love this glue stick. I gotta tell you. 
until I had my name on it. I didn't understand all the wonderful things I could do with it. <laughs> Let's figure out this corner here that's not there. I'm going to just do a little cut like that. Okay. I mean, really, I was talking to some friends yesterday, and they said the thing, like, when we're gluing half-square triangles together, um, using and, and using the glue stick, like, made all the difference in the world. And it was like, guys, I just thought of that on the fly. All right? Dude, that looks pretty good there. Let's put some glue stick down there. This glue stick does wash out, so you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, and then you work your way around. And then you've got a faced something that I don't know what I'm going to do with. <laughs> but here we go. Um, yeah, I didn't, I did not do a stay stitch, but you could around the edge. And what's interesting is this is very, I feel like I didn't have a big, big troubles turning it. Um, this one, you know what, this is a fatter batting. That's what that's all about. Okay, this is a thinner batting. So uh, that is how you do a wonky face. Get this up here, camera. There we go. It's really quite easy. And then I would just go and, and stitch it, okay? So, um, boy, we're going plowing through this fast today. And then if you're when you're done, you can sew a sleeve on if you so like, or you can pin it. And then if you're going to pin it, my recommendations are to use safety pins. <laughs> Okay, John's bringing me in questions. A hard to read. He says it's a little hard to read. Please explain. Oh, it's my daughter. Hey, I'm doing live right now, and you're on speaker. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I was just wondering if you had an old uh, iron you wanted to donate. Of course. Well, I'll call. Now I'm putting you on blast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you back in a little bit. There's right, always an iron to spare. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. There we go. My daughter wants an iron. What's that about? <laughs> okay. Please explain quilting and the back stitch. Do you layer the top batting and backing and then quilt and then back stitch? I think you mean blanket stitch. I would do, because I don't understand back stitch, so I'm going to go with blanket stitch. What I would do is I would put the top together, I mean, fuse everything down, glue it down, do your blanket stitch, then do the quilting. If that's what you're doing, that's how I would do it. I'm wondering about the finches in my hair. <laughs> um, were those printed from fabric from a doodle and then colored? You know what, you guys? The finches in my hair were from a fabric line of mine. And so I made sure I saved enough for that. That said, I went to a quilt store the other day and they had a lot of fabric with birds on it. Some were stylized, some were, you know, um, more realistic. So there are bird fabrics out there. And that's why when Freddie finds fabric with lips, she'll buy, buy yards and yards of it. Why don't you iron the facing fabric, won't you get bumps? Why don't you iron the facing fabric? Won't you get bumps? I don't know what you're asking, Trudy. I am so sorry. If somebody knows what she's asking, please feel free to answer down there. If you're gonna quilt it heavily, do you have the blanket stitch or top stitch around all those pieces? If you're gonna, if you're gonna um, quilt it heavily, I would still, um, let me go grab my piece. I just stuck it on the table over here. If you're gonna quilt it heavily and you're not yet, and I'm, uh, this is um, a la Freddie Moreau, uh, Moran, okay? This is quilted pretty darn heavily, but then I went and I added top stitch. It kinda, it kinda helped define everything. And in fact, look, I forgot to do it there. So actually that's a good comparison. You've got the ones with top stitch below and then you got the ones without. And I'm actually going to put more black around my face and around this just to help define it. It's like you're outlining it or something like that. So, another question. Here comes John. I've got to train my daughter not to call me at 10. Do you have a pattern for the dreidel? Yes, we do have a pattern for the dreidel. So let's go look at... Um, 
how you're going to find that. All right. You're going to use you're going to use this pattern of which I need to talk about that because uh, we found some we I did not find mistakes, but you did. And Barbara Black so graciously helped me with them. Well, let me just do that right now. If your um, go, if you printed this down before yesterday, I'm sorry, go print it out again. Okay. You want the one that says block size 15 inches. The original said six inches and I don't know how that happened. Also, also, um, these were the wrong size and I didn't understand what you were talking about. And now I got it when I actually talked to Barbara on the phone. Um, these were the wrong side size. Now they're the right size. The square is up there just to make sure it measures an inch. So you make sure the holly and the circles are close enough. All right. Um, then there was the, the good news is nothing was super deadly that was in this pattern. Um, but these two measurements were wrong, the top and the bottom. So it's all been corrected. Uh, forgive me for making you reprint or go look at what the new ones are and then just make ex expert, make changes on it, editorial changes. It's Friday. <laughs> okay, so let's go to my computer. Oh, I was in Facebook, okay. Let me go to thequiltshow.com I type with my thing with my things. Okay, so in here go to learn. All right? Learn. I hope you're writing this down. Learn. <laughs> and then go down to projects. Projects. I got to talk about D in a few minutes. Um Oh, and I'm scrolling down. Okay, did you see that? The top was the faces. And then I scroll down, there's your holiday quilt. View this project. Now shoot, where are the digital downloads? There we go, I just scrolled down. Let's open that baby up. Come on, baby. Well, they call this the rainbow circle of death. <laughs> well, it's going to be there. Okay. Come on. There it is. There you go. All right. So we have it there where well, you're good. Uh, let me go back to, do you have another question, John? Okay. The other thing John said too, is you can also, how do I get back to that? Hmm. Let's let's see if John's pants are on fire or not. Okay, I'm going to go to the front page of the quilt show. We'll see if, your pants might be on fire. Nope. Type in holiday quilt. Holiday quilt. Let's see where we go. John's pretty excited about this feature. Oh, then we have to go to learn. John Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Then you have to go to learn and there you go. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about getting my face back on this camera. <laughs> there we go. Um, the fabrics you were using for the facing. Oh, shoot. Come on. Forget how to get back to that. Okay. Had fold lines and not iron. Shouldn't you have ironed it to smooth it out? Yeah, I should always iron things to smooth it out. Um, always iron and I, I must have been doing that in a hurry do you think that using a 12 weight or thicker thread would be a good choice for outlining the pieces in this face quilt you know karen i don't know and if you're uh, if you're questioning it just slap a little something on another piece of fabric and see what happens okay before you pin around. Okay, Linda, I love your avatar. <laughs> okay, so what I wanna talk about now, why don't I just talk about it? Why am I saying what I wanna talk about? So professional. So remember, it has to have block size 15. Now tomorrow on Saturday, Dee is gonna do her thing again at 10 o'clock Pacific time, exactly where you found this. And she's gonna talk about 
deciphery patterns, which I think is hilarious in light of this little debacle. So uh, you might want to, not might, I would watch these. She's a wealth of information. She's been quilting since she was a little girl. So her whole thing is about patterns, how to decipher, how to get fabric for it. Like if it says a total of blah, blah yards, what do you do? And with that, I'm going to tell you, if you're doing this one, start, dig through your stash, get out different values of red. You can see there's some darker values in there on those stars and lighter ones. Please, if you're working with reds, pre-wash, please, okay? And then Monday, we're going to do, start with the triangles. Um, <clears throat> it's a, I don't even know how many triangles are in this thing. I don't even want to know, but I figured that's a good thing to do over Thanksgiving since we're all being sequestered, all right? So um, D is tomorrow at 10 o'clock, and I am on Monday, and we will do half square triangles using the paper method. You don't have to. I'll tell you what to cut it if you're not doing the paper method that I'm going to be showing you. And there we go. So have a great weekend. Let's finish up those avatars. Oh, and it makes me really happy when I look at your profile and you've um, your profile picture. You just go into my profile and put your avatar in. That makes me really happy because then we're going to see little shots of that all over the place. So you guys have a good one. And um, I will see you on Monday. And D will see you on uh, tomorrow. I'm going to be there too. I'm going to be available. Yay. Oh, and then Brandy gets married at 4 o'clock on Saturday. Yay. So I'm going to be at a wedding virtually. I'm so excited. We are so blessed to have her. See ya.